morning. I'm Lydia Liu from UC Berkeley, and I'm talking about joint work with colleagues in Microsoft Research. So increasingly today, many high stakes applications, we know that machine learning models are being trained and used to make decisions about people. And in many such applications as education or hiring or lending, these decisions actually allocate important resources and opportunities. So in thinking about how these decisions in particular are made about people, we want to also think about how people might change their behavior in response to how these decisions are made at the institution level. So there has been a long line of technical um, work looking at how humans respond to algorithms, and I'll just um, talk about a few examples here. So on the one hand, um, people might strategically change their features um, to game the algorithm and rendering the algorithm less effective. Um, but on the, maybe the brighter side is that if humans do respond to algorithms, then we can also design algorithms to incentivize humans to take improving actions over uh, these gaming actions. And in relation to that, if algorithms do reward people appropriately, then that can also encourage them to take beneficial uh, long-term investments, such as um, acquiring job skills or preparing for college. And this is a setting that has been studied um, in the classical work um, in economics by uh, Colin Laurie, and it's also the setting that the current work falls under. So on the flip side of this is if algorithms fail to reward certain groups, that that could uh, discourage them from um, pursuing these beneficial investments. And in particular, our work is concerned uh, with the setting where there is heterogeneity across different groups, and um, that could um, result in different kind of responses to the algorithms with some repercussions for the kind of long-term outcomes that we're likely to see. So I'll talk more about the model uh, with a running example of hiring. So we have a company. The company has some past data on job applicants, and these job applicants can be skilled or unskilled. Um, so it would like to train a hiring policy that uh, maximizes some notion of its own uh, profit. And using, these hiring, using this hiring policy, it would then uh, allocate job opportunities uh, to different people. In this case, uh, there happens to be two different demographic groups. And then um, in the future, in the next time step, new individuals from those two demographic groups will look at how the hiring policy has been in the past and make some decisions um, for themselves whether or not to acquire these relevant job skills. And then they become new data points for the company and the company might update its hiring policy according to these data points that it's seeing in the future. So our question is, under such dynamics, what kind of long-term outcomes or equilibria are produced? And um, if some of these long-term outcomes are undesirable, then what kind of interventions would actually produce more desirable equilibria? So what is the model that we're using for um, so-called individual investment? So on this side of the individuals, they will look at the current hiring policy and ask themselves is if they want to invest in acquiring job skills, uh, given that they experience a certain cost uh, to do that. And also, if they made the decision to acquire these skills, then they will develop some observable, observable features that are essentially group dependent. And um, these features uh, are likely to boost their chances of being hired by a certain amount. And if I am a rational individual, then I would invest in job skills, even only if my expected gain from this is positive. And as these decisions are made at an individual level, in aggregate, they also determine the overall um, qualification rate in each group. So on the institution side, um, it has to decide what is the hiring policy that it wants to use. So it wants to accept skilled individuals and not accept unskilled individuals. So the current hiring policy is picked out of a chosen model class. So say in this case, uh, on the left, you can see the class of all linear models. And uh, the goal is to maximize this expected profit. And in particular, this expected profit depends on the current um, qualification rate in each group. So suppose we started with an initial set, data set that reflects the current qualification rates. The company will choose a hiring policy. And then over time, um, individuals adapt and they choose the qualification rates uh, that changes over time and that prompts a new hiring policy and the qualification rates change again. And as this goes on, uh, typically we end up, um, we have uh, the 
qualification rates will converge to some um, equilibrium. And now the question is, uh, is this equilibrium good and what kind of conditions would give us good equilibria? So um, it turns out that a very classical assumption in um, theory of machine learning um, also gives us good equilibria in this dynamic setting. So if there exists a zero error hiring policy in the model class, then there is always a unique uh, non-trivial equilibrium, and it's quote unquote good because at this equilibrium, all good, uh, groups have the same qualification rate, and it also happens to be the optimal qualification rate, uh, the best that one can hope for in the setting, and uh, this also holds approximately. But the problem with this result is that having the idea that there is a zero error hiring policy is pretty idealistic. So it falls apart quite easily. When does it fall apart? So if there is heterogeneity across different groups. So say um, there exists a zero hiring policy maybe for each group separately but not together. So maybe for the blue group there is a good hiring policy. For the yellow group there is also a good hiring policy but over the whole population there is no low error hiring policy. Then even in this case, we already see the previous positive result breaking down. Um, now, instead of one unique good equilibrium, there actually exists two types of equilibria. And the first type of equilibria is where only one group has the optimal qualification rate. And it corresponds to these two hiring policies here. And um, what the thing uh, that's important about these equilibrium, uh, these equilibria is that they are stable. So essentially, almost all starting points will converge to one of these unbalanced uh, hiring policies. And um, the second type of equilibrium um, is where the two groups have the same qualification rate, but it is unstable. So even though it might be desirable to have a balanced hiring policy, um, in this case, even if I started very close to something that is balanced, I never converge to it. This equilibrium is unstable in a dynamical system sense. So we can already see like this heterogeneity is posing some serious challenges to having um, good long-term outcomes. And in the paper, we also look at other challenges such as uh, the zero error or the high error um, regime. So there are some important takeaways, I think, from this analysis, which is that the kind of interventions that we might think about using, um, they may or may not be effective in the um, long term, and their effectiveness essentially depends on dynamics. So one example could be I, I might want to decouple the hiring policy by group, meaning I allow myself to pick a different best policy for each group. And intuitively, that helps in the static setting, it lowers the error overall, but in the dynamic setting, it could actually backfire in certain settings and reinforce a negative status quo. So there are more details about this in the paper, and also we looked at another intervention that is subsidizing the cost of investment for a disadvantaged group, and um, this also depends on the dynamics, how, how like, much of it is expected to improve the long-term outcome. So in closing, I think algorithms and retraining, um, all these things impact human decisions beyond their intended sco scope. And this we know very well, but what we don't really know so well is how do we have a more principled view of how these feedback loops occur, what kind of feedback loops are possible, and what kind of implications uh, they have for system design. And I'm very excited about more work in this um, um, area. So thank you very much for listening, and thank you to my wonderful collaborators.